Okay, the Rebbe is going to give an example of, of how Yechida, the highest level of the soul, the most spiritual level, expresses itself specifically in physical things, in this physical world, more than it does in the spiritual. Yechida. Expresses itself more in the physical world than it does in the spiritual world, even though it also expresses itself everywhere. Yechida is pure godliness, and pure godliness is <coughs> revealed <coughs> everywhere, but the essence of pure godliness is revealed specifically down here in this physical world, and especially in a person's free choice. But we're going to see. Let's see. Let's have a look. Let's do Chaf. We're in one chapter Chaf, in this beautiful Sicha of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, which was Tavshin Chaf Vav, which probably translates to be 1965. Huh? I guess it depends on the calendar that year. It's written next to the new year, but 1965. It says, <clears throat> there are two things in Torah to Hasidut, Chaf. We did a little bit of this yesterday. <clears throat> and also it is also an existing in the entire Torah. Number one, the Torah that the Torah permeates Chasidut, <clears throat> the Torah in general, God, especially this essence level of Godliness, this level of Yechida, this permeates into all of the aspects of the soul, nefesh, ruach, neshama, and chaya, <clears throat> until it can even affect the animal soul, nefesh of Bahamit, and even in the physical world, because God is simply everywhere. But we don't feel that. Nevertheless, the essence of God is really found everywhere, and it permeates everything. And that's the idea of the Torah, is to bring this fact out, to reveal this fact. That's one thing. Another thing is, Even though that the Yechida of the soul <coughs> permeates all of the aspects of the soul and also all the aspects of the world, <coughs> but the true expression of the essence of the soul is in only in the lowest levels, the lowest levels, the lower levels. That is where the soul is most expressed. That's why we have this world, is in order to, that's the purpose of the world, to express the essence of the soul. <clears throat> and when this essence of the, of the soul is expressed, then there's what we call meaning. Always call it meaning. Thing becomes meaningful, right? A person goes and he he runs around. He goes to 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 to, to action-packed sports games and plays and things like that. But what's the real meaning? You know, what's the real meaning for it? He hears, you know, back home that his uh, his son's bar mitzvah is today. He's in the middle of this. Oh yeah, I forgot my son's bar mitzvah. How could I do it? What does he do at the bar mitzvah? Just sits there like a nothing. Sits there, but that's that's something meaningful. You know, he has the, the, the all this action that he's doing, he's climbing mountains, who knows what. It's his son's bar mitzvah, it's his, his mother, father's birthday. If there's something meaningful to the person, then he stops everything that he's doing for the sake of this, for the sake of this meaningful thing. So that's what it means. Meaningful means when you, the ultimate meaningful thing that touches on the essence of the soul <clears throat> is this level of yechida. And the yechida is only expressed in this physical world. When you do something, that really is what God wants you to do, and especially when you do it against nature. So you peel off all these aspects of nature that claim that they have real meaning. You get to the real essence of what real meaning is. That's the <clears throat> real meaning, real love. And that's called the level of Yechida. <clears throat> and that is expressed specifically in this physical world. That's why the Torah was given in this physical world. And other is going to explain it even better. Look at this. Yesh <coughs> For instance, Bakal in Yanim Shibha Sirut, Gamba Nigla. Let's give an example from the 
lowest aspects of the Torah, law. The most simple and, how do you say, mundane aspect of the Torah is law. Law is a thing which you don't have to have much intelligence in order to do. You, you, know, you have to have intelligence. You want to learn the Talmud. You want to learn Kabbalah, things like this. If you really have, want to understand it to its depth, so you have to have intelligence. You have to use your intelligence, or build up your intelligence. But to do laws, you don't have to put on tefillin. You don't need much intelligence to put on tefillin. You don't need much intelligence to know on Shabbos you don't light a light. You know, you go to a rabbi. The rabbi tells you what to do. On Shabbos we don't write. On Shabbos we don't light uh, light lights. We don't uh, drive our car. These things are simple things. You just don't do it. You don't even have to know how to read a book in order to know how to do it. Simple. That's in that simplicity. That's where. The essence of godliness is expressed. Let's look and see. Here is a law. <clears throat> there is a law, the law, legal aspect of the Torah. is added in it, biur, the laws of the Torah, there is added in them a new light, a new, <coughs> say, liveliness, by means of by means of using chasidut is that also puts new life into all of the laws of the Torah <clears throat> now in one way the laws of the Torah that's the very essence of the Torah uh, that's one thing that there is in Judaism that there isn't in any other religion all the other religions like Havdil. <clears throat> all the other religions are man made all of them, without exception. There may be men that were inspired, etc. But God, the only religion that was made by God himself was Judaism. God appeared before all the Jews on Mount Sinai, and every Jew heard and felt what, what this exactly was. I don't know, but it was the same revelation that was in the Holy of Holies. Every Jew felt it, that God is everywhere. <clears throat> but where is this godliness? The, the uniqueness of Judaism really is in the in the, the, the laws, in the commandments, the commandments. Other religions don't have such a thing. They have rituals, they have their rituals, they have their practices, they have their customs, but they don't have any commandments directly from God. They have things that have been done for the generations, and this person said you have to go. They don't really have anything that's directly from God. But the commandments, for sure, they don't even have anything vaguely similar to it. Right? They have their medallions or their signs or their... <clears throat> <coughs> or their uh, practices, but there's no such thing as commandments that have to be exact. Oh, everybody has to do this commandment, right? You have to do the commandment. You put on tefillin, it has to be exact. A mezuzah on your door has to be exact. One letter is wrong. But a lot of times that becomes very boring. It becomes very sort of, how do you say, uh, mundane. And, and I think there's a word called pikiyun. Very sort of, you know, what do you care that this, this has to be here, it has to be there, it has to be on the right place on your arm? No, it's in the wrong place on your arm. Eh, really, God cares about that. What type of a God? We need a free God that's open. He says, no, when you understand what's going on in the commandments, then you realize that this is, the commandments are really something special you don't find in the world. It puts a certain meaning. There's a certain joy that can be revealed that you can't find anywhere else in the world. Simcha Shel Mitzvah, it's called. Let's take one law. I'll give you an example. Arba amot shel adam konot lo b'kol makom. The four amas around the person. An ama is a biblical measure, and it's about one and a half feet. Say one and a half to two feet. Let's say it's one and a half feet. So every person around him has what's called four amas, four amas all around you, and that's we talked a little bit about this. Is that's, the, where we sort of ended, yes. that's where we ended. That's sort of the domain of a person, right? If a person, let's say, wanders too far outside, let's say he wanders from his house on Shabbat, doesn't know where he is, and he gets in the middle of a field, and he's gone, let's say, too far from, from the city where he is. 2,000, says it's 2,000 almas, right? like 3,000 3, feet from his <clears throat> home. So it says then, if, he, if he's gone too far out, he can't, Walk anywhere. He can only. He can't. Walk. He has to stay where he is. What does it mean? Where he is is four amas. That's four amas. There's four amas all around. So how do we measure this four amas? Well, let's look and see. Arba amos shall adam konos lo b'kol makom. Four amas around a person 
that possesses him, gives him possession. It's a, in, in Baba, Baba Metziah. Amakonas <clears throat> It says the four amas of a person take possession from him and call him everywhere. We'll see there's detail, detail, details of the battle law. Let's say in general, right, somebody throws a thousand dollars and the thousand dollars lands within your four amas, right? Somebody says, here, uh, I want you to take this $20,000 and he throws it to you and it lands within your four amas, right? And somebody else comes and grabs it, can't, can't grab it, it's yours. He's, he designated it for you, you don't have to grab a hold of it. He, right, he threw it to you, you'd say, and she four amas. There's other examples, let's look and see. Besimta betside reshut harabim. Not, if it's in the public domain, not, but if it's in... It's called a simta in a public domain. If he throws it into your domain, your private domain, then for sure it's yours. But let's say it's in a place that's sort of open, it's ownerless, and you're standing there on the side of what's called a public domain. Public domain, it still is uh, open land, nobody owns it, and something falls within your four amas. So he says, that thing is yours. As soon as you claim it, that's my, it's yours. Obenogea, Legitian, Kedushin, even in Rishut Rabim, if a man says <clears throat> to a woman, you are married to me, here take, a woman can be married technically if you give her money, right? So he says, you are married to me, and here is the money, take the money. It has to be, what is a pruta, shava pruta, whatever it is, $10, something. He throws $10, a ring, that's one of the reasons they have a ring, so that he's marrying her with a possession, with some, you are married to me, he throws it to her, and it doesn't reach her, it just reaches within four almost, that's it, she's married. If it reaches within six, six feet of her, 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 where she's standing, within six feet, then that, that, that's it, she doesn't have to take it in her hand. And the same thing the other way around, if a person divorces his wife, he throws her a divorce bill, it lands within, that, that's considered that she received it. So four amas of a person, that versus him. And this is a, 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 a a divorce bill and a marriage, that's even if you're in a public domain, a totally public domain, you're standing in the middle of the, of the highway or something in, in uh, Manhattan, <coughs> and he throws, <coughs> four almost takes possession of a person. Let's see. The Kenyans, eh, this possession, that you take possession of this thing, the rabbis have established this. Technically, you have to take it in your hand, but if it's just within your... So that people will not come Just give me one minute. Okay, you have to take this uh, just uh, one second. Give me a second. Okay, so it says the rabbis established four amas of a person. It's in the Talmud in Baba Matsya. Amud Yud. That so that people won't come to fight. There won't be fights. <clears throat> Something falls on the ground. Everybody's going to come and grab it from the other person just because it's not in his hand. So the rabbis made it that if it's within your four amas, then you have a claim on it. This makes it claim. You have a claim on it. So that will minimize arguments because the Torah makes a clear decision on what, uh, what it is if it's four, four amas. Okay, where do you get this thing of the four amas for? Four amas, six feet, six feet around you, that possesses things. From, this deals with what? Any items, money, anything that, that's around the person. Yikne lo will be his possession. In order to take possession of this thing, the rabbis said that the four amas around the person become like his Yard, come like his domain. 
Ba'al yedeze, by means of this, ubameile, automatically, konos lo etachifetz, this takes possession of the item, which is, happens to be resting within this six-foot domain all around the person. Kenyan chatzer, like a Kenyan chatzer. By, by the way, it's, it's a little bit more actually than four almost because what they do is they, they make a square. It's a square around the person. So you go four almost this way. That's like the, what do you call it, the ha- half of one of the sides of the square. Uh, so... So if you take a, a square, let's say the side is like this, but you make it a square, so it ends up the ends are further than six almas. Yeah. And that, that area goes all around you. So let's say it comes out to be seven, something like that, almost. Okay. We're going to talk about the, the Hasidus. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Don't worry. All your days are by means of this. Mamela konus lo tzachafes of monach. <clears throat> Therefore, automatically the six feet which are around the person, six feet, a little bit more, seven feet, this makes a Kenyan chatzer. This is as though that it fell in his front yard that has a fence around it and it belongs to him. Lochin, therefore, katan, therefore, a child <coughs> that can't make any possession. He hasn't got a house. Therefore, we don't give <coughs> four amas to a Child, if something is within the four amas of a child, then it does not, it does not take possession of it. Ella, that this is what the, the chachamim, the rabbis, they declare that a person's four amas around him is his domain. <coughs> this is only regarding to taking possession of items that are resting within this and not for anything else. <coughs> and not for anything else. Four almas around the person. Ve'im <coughs> hiyos, and even though she kinyan dalit almas, that this four almas is mitam kinyan chatzer, it's because it is like taking, it's like his Property, his domain, calls out nevertheless adiv hu mikinyan chatzir. In some ways, it is better than if someone would throw something into his actual backyard. Right? If you throw something into his backyard, why? She chatzir she eno mishtameret. Because if if a person has a backyard that people go through, right? That people walk through. That he's he hasn't got let's say he hasn't got a fence around it. Even when he's standing near it, that he can even pick it up. But if it is a yard that is not, that he doesn't uh, take possession of, then, if it happens to be a front yard, it's in his front yard, and it's, it's a public place, it's a place where people go all the time, as um, then it does, doesn't take possession of it until he says it belongs to me. The ilu dalit amos, but if it's the four amos of a person, av she'en mishtamirit, ein sorech lomar zachtali. He doesn't have to say anything; it automatically belongs to him. His four amos, <coughs> usually. Va'ad shekonos lo laadam av shalomi dato v'ratzono kolal. That if. There are four Amos. The explanation is, the Dalad Amos in the four Amos of a person. Yes. Four Amos of a person, mitpashetet bechinat ayechideshebo. That's where the person is. What's the, what's the point? Why did, I, why did God put us into the world? He put us into the world so that we could sh- change the world. There's all these Eastern religions that say you put into the world because the world is a big fake out. It's a big lie. Get out of the world. Get out of the world. If you, the, you want to be re- involved in the world, convince other people also to get out of the world. That's if you have, you know, you're merciful. Don't just get out of the world for yourself. Pull other people also out of the world. Don't get involved. <clears throat> it says Hasid is exactly the opposite. Judaism. God put man in the world because God wants 
something that's never been before, a new type of a light, a new type of reality to be revealed, and it can only come from this physical world. Only by means of working in this world, only by means of making the proper choices in this world, can you transform the world. And the world becomes infinitely higher and more beautiful and more godly or whatever than going to heaven and all the heavenly spheres and levels. <clears throat> what can possibly be? Well, course, that, that's impossible. I mean, the, the upper heavens are so much pleasure. It says it's nothing compared to what this world, the potential this world holds. And that's why God puts us into the world. That's the whole story of the Bible. <clears throat> to come to a whole entire new level of reality to realize that we're, that we're, we're not, we don't even know how to use this level of reality now. That's what was revealed at Mount Sinai, that was revealed in the Holy of Holies. Right? A new type of meaning, responsibility that's never been revealed before. Says the Rebbe, that's the whole idea to work in the physical world. That's why it says the whole essence of man is where is his domain? Where is the man spread out to? To the area where he can change. Let's look and see. <clears throat> Therefore, four amas, <clears throat> if it's in the proper place, this takes possession for a person, even if he doesn't say this is mine, and even if he doesn't know something is within the four amas, his four amas. He doesn't know that it's within the six feet. It, nevertheless, it's his. Nobody can steal it from him. Because <clears throat> that's this level of yechida. It has nothing to do with your mind and your awareness and your intelligence. It's something totally above you. It's your potential, you want to call it. Your humanness, your human potential to change the world. Why is there such a thing as your six amas? Why is that your domain? Domain in order to take po possession of physical items. Hakin haknat davar gashmi shemichutz ladam. In other words, taking possession of a thing which is outside of the person, and that's the essence of a man is to go outside of himself. Hakochot shel adam atzmo. The abilities of a person, but called Dalit Bechinot, Nefesh Ruch Neshami Chayeshebo, Arba Amot. That's his four Amot. Ain be a Cholotam Lam Shich will a Galot at Bechinot the Yechida. They cannot <coughs> re reveal this aspect of Yechida. The spiritual aspects of a soul cannot reveal. You can get very spiritual and very out of the world, have good feelings, but that cannot reveal the essence of the soul. Rock only, kesha kochot boim levarer. Only when you use these abilities that you have, these spiritual abilities, to refine something in the world, shemichutz laram, which is outside of you, haknat chafetz chafetz lereshuto taking something into the possession of man, in order to refine it and to, 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 to how do you say, purify it, refine it. Take the world, when he's trying to take the world and making sense out of the world, in other words, you use the world for what God wants you to use it for. And remember, God is the creator here. <coughs> God is the creator. You can call God a lot of names, but God, the main Name in one way, the main name of God is that He's the Creator. He creates the physical world, and He's creating the physical world and putting man inside of the physical world so that we should just reveal that fact that He's creating the world. Just reveal it that there's a, re a, a Creator and that He has a reason for creation. Only man can reveal this, and He can only reveal it by using things that are outside of Him. It's also Professor Viktor Frankl says. I read a lot of his books. The door to meaning, the door to meaning opens outward. A person has to go outside of himself, can't find meaning by sitting on a rock and, and, and thinking, uh, you, you, maybe you find some, something else. You know, it could be you find some sort of uh, nirvana or whatever it is, uh, some sort of a click, you get into some sort of a, of a in, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, conscious corner 
where things are blissful and you can ignore the world and you feel this tremendous levels of bliss. Okay, but it's a, in a way, it's, it's a big fake out. Because the main purpose of man is to be in this world and to deal with this world, but to be according to the way God wants. It was to have this feeling of bliss and love of God and all this. But the, the main thing is to work into the world the way God wants. That's what the Torah is. So he says, therefore, <clears throat> because the main thing of man is to fix up the world, therefore, what's outside of him, <clears throat> that holds the key to meaning and the reason we're here. As davka midgalim b'hem bechinat yechida. Then is it revealed the level of yechida. Al pi kol and iskar. So according to everything we said, yum tok masha hakanas kli asi mar. This vessel to. There's another place also, another mimer, where the Rebbe says that what is the yechida of a person? Maybe he explains it over here. Is when he, a person lays down and he puts his hands over his head. That's the four amas. If a person, you're standing in a place, you lay down, put your hands over your head, that area is called your domain. So we see the hands are very interesting because your hands have the ability to take something that's very low and lift it up high. And that's the whole, in a way, the whole name of the game. For man to take things that are low, the physical, and seem to be separated from God, and to raise them up high and show that really nothing is separate from God. And God is this totally <clears throat> level of meaning and happiness and joy and blessing <clears throat> that we can't imagine. It can be found in everything. So that's why we see that the four amas around the person, <clears throat> that's the level of yechido. What does it mean? That it deals with physical things and the physical, you can take a physical object and that becomes all of a sudden the Jewish object. It becomes thing that belongs to you. <clears throat> that, why? In order for a person to bororo, in order to Refine it and use it, l'shem shemayim, for the sake of the Creator. As davka then midgalit b'hem bechinat yechida then is revealed this aspect of yechida. Al pi kol an niskar. According to everything we said above, yum tok now it will be made understandable, be made sweet. Ma shehachana v'kli la'asimar. Why it is that the preparation and the vessel for the arrival of the, of the Mashiach, which Mashiach is going to change the priorities of all mankind <clears throat> is hafatzat amayanot chutzadavka. How do we prepare for coming Mashiach? By spreading out these teachings of chasidut. Nosef lezeh shemikiv and shegiluya Mashiach yiyeh bakol in yani olam. In addition to the fact that the arrival of Mashiach will not only be for the Jews and not only for the non-Jews, it'll be for the, everything in the world will have an elevation. Like it was sort of in Noah's Ark. What was in Noah's Ark? Noah's Ark, it was, why was it the lions didn't go out and kill the other things that they had? They had them trapped. <laughs> it was ideal for the lions. Right? They had all these zebras and, and, and other things. They were all trapped there. Right? They could have just eaten them up in a second. Especially it says they had, they had, Noah had to bring in seven of the kosher animals. So here are the lions. There was only two lions, a man and his wife, and they had, there was seven cows and seven sheep and seven goats and seven this type of goats and seven oxes and seven this. <clears throat> there was seven of each of the kosher animals. This is heaven, right? They could have just eaten all up, right? Now who would have stopped them? Noah didn't have the power to stop them. Because no, since the, night, the lions were quiet, they, 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 they didn't hurt anybody. As long as they got fed. <clears throat> right. They got, and he had what to feed them. So they were quiet. They didn't go and kill, kill each other. They, get, they didn't get in arguments with leopards and whatever, with the, with the, the giraffes. And the, <clears throat> how could it possibly be? <clears throat> it says, really, that's what it's going to be? In the, in the days of the, the, uh, the accomplishment of Mashiach, it says the lion will be together with the lamb. And the, 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 <clears throat> in other words, the, there won't be any more destruction in the world. It won't be necessary. Even lions won't destroy Right? Even lions, which that's their nature. You can't blame a lion because he, he, you know, he eats a giraffe or something. <clears throat> that's his nature. So nevertheless, that nature will change. And so the nature of man will also change. What's the <clears throat> preparation for this? Is the teaching of Hasidut. Spreading out the ideas of Hasidut. <clears throat> like it says, Ro called Basar. Ubemela called Achana Vaklilaza. Fatsa the Mayonot Bakal 
on the tachton biyotzer chutzah. In other words, that these ideas of Hasidic ideas should reach to the <coughs> furthest and furthest of places. Eventually, it sinks in. Eventually, it sinks in. Bitoi mahut mayanot hasidutu kesheim mitpashtim chutzah davka. Only when these <coughs> ideas of Hasidut are spread out to the world. In other words, what is the ideas of Hasidut? We're not talking about that every non-Jew has to walk around and talk about what's Panimiyot Ak and what's Panimiyot uh, Arik and an- Atik and the, all these different levels of Tzimtzum and <coughs> contractions and things like that. No. Just the idea that God is creating everyone. Constantly. And He's creating everything. Constantly. And that God is infinitely, infinitely good. And He wants only for our good. And that everything that happens <coughs> is happening <coughs> because God wants us <clears throat> to give a free choice, to make a free choice, to choose to do what's right. Everything that's happening is in order that we should make a choice to do what's right. Everything. So therefore, all of these people, the, the Christians and the Muslims and these people, they, why do why all these religions are so successful and so big? Because God wants them to make a choice to leave it, to re- worship only Him, to worship only Him through the seven Noahide commandments. Very difficult choice to make. Here we see there's billions and billions of people that believe in, the, in this, and in, in it's their false religions. It's not so, but on the other hand, it's a religion. And they, at least they believe in something. <clears throat> so why is it leave them alone then? It says that Abraham used to go around and break the idols. What did he break the idols for? He wanted people to know that there's something else. There's something else that they have, they have a, uh, how do you say, a, an option. That they don't have to worship these idols in order to come close to God. That God is infinitely close to them. Abraham started to, to let everybody know by Yikra Shem B'Shem Hashem Kel Olam that God and the world are not two separate things. The world is a creation of God. God is creating it every instant, brand new, and He's creating it from His essence. There's, there's a, 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 a reason inside of everything. <clears throat> People see this and they feel it. It takes a while to digest it, but still the idea is there. The Rebbe said that if <clears throat> the idea of the seven Noahide commandments would have been spread out before World War II, he said it could have been that World War II would have been avoided. Right? When Hitler stood up and said, let's make war, we're going to kill, we're going to take over, it could have been that there would have been a significant number of people saying, listen, you know, that's not the way things are done. You know, we, there's God in the world, and God will take care of it. God will take care of Germany. Don't worry about it. We don't have to, you know, let, let's f- figure out another thing except for killing and... Re- if people are attacking us, good, I can understand. But nobody's attacking. Why should we be the attackers? You know, it, it, just why not? Because it's one of the seven Noah commandments. You're not allowed to kill. You can't kill for no reason. You can't kill people. Just in order to take the guy's house, to take his country. You can't kill people. It's one of the seven Noah commandments. Who says seven Noah commandments? God says. Where'd you hear this from? From the rabbi. Right? <laughs> That's supposed to be the idea that God is everywhere and God is creating. Where is this God? He's creating you. He's creating me. It's an idea that, that, that's in a way against human nature. It's against human intelligence. Right? We don't see, listen, there's so many wonderful philosophers. There's deep philosophers in the world. The tremendously deep people. Kant with, 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 with even Spinoza. Even these people, tremendously deep minds. Right? And nevertheless, none of them really came on their own to the conclusion. <clears throat> and they're, they're, all of them were ruled by, by nature, by their own nature. <clears throat> as, as wonderful as their minds are, none of them came to the conclusion. Here, listen, one second. The Jews say that there's this thing with the Bible. They say that three million people w- w- saw God at Mount Sinai. Right? Let's look into this. Could it be true? Maybe it's true. Eh, not true. Eh. Here you have in Israel. You don't have to go so far. Big professors in Israel, right? The, the Israel, a Jewish state, supposed to be a Jewish state. Eh, there was no such thing as going out of Egypt. It didn't happen. It was made up. You know, why didn't somebody else make up such a story like this? Don't worry about it. The Jews, they, 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 they're, they're clever. They made a clever story, right? Who knows what it is? <clears throat> this believing that there's one God that creates us all the time is going against human nature. But nevertheless, it's the truth. And that's what Hasidu tries to bring out. This idea of the truth. When is Hasidut the, the great power and the goodness? Only when it's spread out. All the time that these wellsprings are found inside 
Ein mitbate dayan emitid mahutam. Then there's not yet expressed their true essence. Here you get there's people, they know all Hasidus, they know all the Maimorim, they know all of this. It's really wonderful how they want. What's the main thing they said? One day he found this hippie walking down the street. He started to talk to him. He talked to him more. And this hippie, all of a sudden, he came and he started learning. And all of a sudden, he changed his whole lifestyle. And he was this. And he was going to go and do a, he was a criminal. He was this, and he changed his whole lifestyle. Oh, this is the great thing. Well, that, that, what is the great thing? The great thing is that this man knows all the Torah. And he has a tremendous mind. He spent day and night learning all of the Gomorrahs and all of this. It's, it's very nice. But that that he made one person, that makes a story. That's a story. That's a, an amazing thing. A person, human being, there's a free will. He was enjoying himself. All of a sudden, he decided from his own free will that this, this is foolish. He's wasting his time. He's going to be a good Jew. So, oh yeah, because you talked to him about going to heaven and hell. No, we never mentioned heaven and hell. We didn't mention going after afterlife. We're talking about right now. What's what? Calls a man all the time that mayanot are inside. <clears throat> this is not that their true greatness is not expressed. Mikiv and shehachanav aklil bias Mashiach because the vessel and the preparation for the coming of the Mashiach is <clears throat> the essence of Hasidut, the whole essence of Hasidut, the whole essence of Judaism is the arrival of Mashiach. And we have the example of Mashiach. We have the Rebbe. We have all the Rebbe's of Chabad. Who, who, who the Mashiach is a person that he knows all the Torah, and his whole interest is only to change the world, that the world should be a good place. <laughs> the Lubavitcher Rebbe had one person that decided to be his enemy, this guy, uh, some rabbi in Bnei Brak. <clears throat> he decided to be the Rebbe's enemy. So somebody asked him, why do you hate the Lubavitcher Rebbe? I don't understand him. He knows the whole Torah. <laughs> he knows things he never even heard about before in the Torah. He knows the secrets of the Torah. He knows, this. He knows everything that there is. What do you find wrong? Maybe he said something wrong in some place. He said he sits in Brooklyn and he makes the whole world crazy. Right? Who can't do it? He sits in Brooklyn and macht Meshuggah the belt. He says he's sitting in Brooklyn. He's making. That's exactly the point of Mashiach. That he's going to make the whole world crazy. Right? Now the world is normal. Now the world is normal. They, when people worship a person. People go and they make all sorts of wars. They kill each other for, because this guy believes this way. He believes differently than me. The Sunnis and the Shiites and the this. They're killing and raping mothers in the name of the religion. Right? And this is okay. That, that's normal. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's always groups that come up and they say, we're going to, Jews, always Jews, we're going to forbid circumcision. Why? Because it traumatizes the child. Traumatizes the child. The child's only eight years old, eight days old, and all of a sudden you're cutting them up, right? And everybody's laughing and they're all happy and they're cutting the child. There's a tremendous trauma for the child. You say, yeah, that's why you see that you know all the non-Jews are so normal. You know, the, the Germans, Germans, the communists, they were such normal, nice people because they weren't circumcised, and all the Jews are just like all you know freaky. Because they were circumcised. You can see they're all, you know, looking behind their back and they're always covering up their, you know, their privates. So who knows what they're doing? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the most ridiculous, ridiculous thing in the, you could possibly imagine, right? That's normal. That's called normal. Right? The Jews are not normal. And these, these people are normal. That's what you're talking normal. You ever see that? You ever see, what is it? Uh, what is it called? The MMA wrestling? <laughs> That's normal. Two guys get up there and the crowd is like they got... 50,000 people in the crowd, and one guy says to the other one, you know, I'm going to kill your dog. And the guy, and the whole crowd just laughing, and they're screaming, and they're, that's normal. <laughs> that's entertainment. Right? <laughs> that's entertainment. You know, I watched it, I watched it, I really wanted to see you know, what, what was involved over there. I watched it like five minutes, I couldn't believe it. It's like at some sort, of, and people are really, oh, they're screaming, they're really, you know, into it. And these wars, you know, Napoleon came, we're going to take over the whole world. All of a sudden he has like 500,000 soldiers that are going live just to kill people with Hitler. With this. That's normal. That's called normal. <clears throat> Call Zaman, as says the Rebbe. That's the idea of Hasidu, to, to bring out the value of life, the importance of being in the world, the importance of making choices in order to serve the Creator, to make the world into a meaningful place. Every detail, every moment can be made meaningful. Every moment can be filled with love, with meaning, with blessing. Every moment. We're not talking only about Jews. About we're not talking about smart people. Most simple people can make a simple decision, right? Little children. So what's, what's the question? <clears throat> And 
And that's what the, I mean, the idea is, to spread these ideas out until it becomes the, the furthest place out feels this godliness. That's the whole idea of Mashiach. And that's the idea of the Alter Rebbe, She'az, then, Yizdachech Gashmiut. Then the physical world will be refined. Hainu she'yia Gashmiut, the physical world will be, but it will be refined. In the physical world and the body and the world. I mean, listen, it, 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 it's not really so amazing. You, t- you take a, a, a rock, right? You take a rock. There's a thousand different <clears throat> viewpoints. You can take a rock and see the, the amazing miracle of, of what it is. First of all, every rock is different. Then there's all these different <clears throat> materials. There's flint and there's this, the iron and this, what a rock is made of. Then you go a little bit deeper into the rock. There's the molecules. Then there's the atoms. Then there's the quarks. Then there's, then there's aspects inside of the, the rocks that maybe there's a little bit of, of organic something in there. Maybe some, some, some sort of life inside. Of billions and billions of atoms and and electrons, and energies, and quarks, and masons, and submasons, who knows what this? and a little rock, right? What's the big deal, a little rock? You know how many rocks there? You look at things, this is incredible. How did it get to be? Nature. Okay, that you can say that, you can say that. But if you say it's God, if it is God, this is amazing. This is really something. This is fantastic. This is amazing. You know, God is, he's really creating everything. Yeah, he's creating everything. Why would he do that? Because he's not understandable, Right? It's not understandable. So everything, the world becomes tremendously interesting, right? If a rock is so interesting, think of a plant, of a plant, of an animal, of an animal, think of a human being, right? How, how valuable it is. The Yair or Hashem li Yisrael, then there will be a light of godliness without any garments. Umi Yisrael or li Yisrael, and from this light which will come to the Jewish people, this awareness of God, this is written also in the Tanya. From this will come <coughs> in, in chapter of, uh, what is it, the 36, he's talking about the Mashiach. From the light which will come to the Jews, the Jews are God's chosen people, and <coughs> the, the sons of God are all the Jews. From the light and the awareness that the Jews have will also come light and awareness to the whole entire world. Almost like it says, call Basar Yachtav, that all of flesh will see together. Call Yeshve Tevel Arzecha, all of the dwellers of the world. This of the Yomot Mashiach and Tchiat Ameti, it all depends on our deeds. This also is in the Tanya, what is it, chapter, chapter 37. It all depends on our deeds. All of the time <coughs> that we are now in Gullus, because the, what causes the reward for the commandment? is the commandment itself. I think we even learned that in the class, didn't we? Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the whole purpose of Hasidut Chabad, is to bring the world to its ultimate, how do you say, expression. Expression. The goodness, the infinite, which is, which is in the world. That's what Abraham revealed. That's what Abraham started. He was the first Jew. It's taken almost 4,000 years. But he has patience. But we don't. We want Mashiach now. <clears throat> and the only way to do it, we, wait. it, we don't want to wait. And the only way to do it is by learning Hasidut, <clears throat> doing the Torah and commandments in a happy way, in a meaningful way, thinking about what the Rebbe writes before we do, before we act, before we speak. And that will make a world into a good, beautiful, meaningful, blessed place, every instant, every place, every human being with the arrival, the revelation of the Rebbe, Melech HaMashiach, now. Yechi Adonino, Moreinu Verabeinu, Melech HaMashiach, Leovo Voidnum Voet, Ay, 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 Yechi Adonainu, Moreinu Verabinu, Melech HaMashiach, Le'olam.